So, uh, I mentioned being direct directionally challenged, which is true. Last week I was talking about being directionally challenged. Um, but one of the things that I, I'm super grateful for is if you ever go to the mall. So last summer I went to the Mall of America, which is the Mall of Malls. It is the malliest mall you can find. Um, the Mall of America is massive, it's huge. And um, in it, they have these interactive maps. So the great thing about map of malls is, I, I think, you have maps and the Mall of America is no exception. Not only do they have maps, they're, as I said, interactive maps. So you can like type in the name of the place you wanna go. You can even type in the genre of kind of store you'd like to go to and it comes up with this massive list. So mall maps are very, very helpful, but every mall map, whether it's the Mall of America where you can like search digitally or just your local mall where it's simply a photograph or a picture of the layout of the mall, virtually every one of these mall maps has one thing that sets them apart. It's as one thing that is in, in, invaluable when it comes to getting around. And it is a single dot. And next to that single dot are the words, you are here. It's necessary, it's, it's needed. It, it's, it's one of those things where without that, without that dot, without that dot and those three words, you are here. You can, here's the map. Yeah, I can see where all the stores are, but I have no idea how to get to those stores. I have no idea where I am because I don't know where I am. And that's the, that's the reality is that so often the first thing we need when it comes to finding our way is I just need to know where I am. I need to know that, okay, here, right now, you're here right now. I am here. And this is, this is the thing we just started last week and we started a series called lost and they not based off the TV show, but based off of the reality that in our lives, I mean, we heard it in the very last line of today's gospel where Jesus says, many are called, few are chosen. In fact, what he's saying is, many are called, meaning everyone, everyone is called. Everyone has a, God has made everyone on purpose. God has made everyone for a purpose. When he says, if you are chosen, what he means, and this is through, through all the centuries, Christians have said, what that means is not that many are called, but God doesn't want some, that he doesn't choose some. It means many are called, all are called. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a vocation, but not every one of us says yes to this. That you, we're free to say no. So Jesus is saying, many are called. Everyone has, has a call in their life. Everyone has been made on purpose. Everyone has been made for a purpose, but not every one of us says yes to that purpose. So a lot of us, we find ourselves just being lost. I don't know how to find that purpose. I don't know how to find what is the plan of God? What's the call of God in my life? And so we kind of just end up wandering. We kind of end up just kind of like shooting in the dark. We kind of just end up lost. And so I don't know what that plan is. I don't know what that purpose is. I don't know how to find my way. I don't know how to get there. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I am. And here's the thing. I don't know where I am can be the line. Because the first thing I need to realize is where I am. And at the risk of sounding overly simplistic, I think it's easier than we think. I think we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to answer this first question. Where am I? The answer is you are here. And again, that, that sounds, I, I, I might be oversimplifying things, but also y'all might be overcomplicating things because the reality is you are here. Like the, in the sense of, um, we've said this before, but I'll say it again, is who you are right now. Like the person you are right now is who you are. You're not someone else. Who you are right now is who you are. If that's the case, if that's true, then where you are right now is where you are. That right now, this, the life you're living right now, this is your life. To, to pause on this, to realize that life isn't waiting to start. You're not waiting to be someone. Life is, has started. This is life. You are someone. You are here. And this is your life. Again, I get, that might be oversimplifying things, but I don't think that it is. I think too often, we're waiting for life to happen and we forget that it already is. I think too often we're forgetting, we're, 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 we're waiting to be somewhere and we forget that you're already there. Like this is it, you are here. Another question comes up out of this and I think it's two important questions. If this is true, that in the midst of maybe in this life feeling lost, that you are here, we have two questions. And the first question is, uh, is this, where I should, is this where I should be? That's the question we need to ask. I'm here, okay, you're here. Is this where I should be? And the second question is, what if it isn't enough? 
We're going to get to both of these, but I think the first question is we need to ask first. Um, okay, you are here. Is this where I should be? No, we have to realize this. We have to realize that God speaking to us is not accidental. So go back to the gospel today. Here's this parable that Jesus tells about this king throwing a wedding feast for his son, and he clearly sends out an invitation to all those who are in all those he wants in the wedding feast. Now, pause on this for one moment, because this is a spiritual principle that every one of us who are trying to discern what God's will is in our lives, we have to understand. God always speaks in clarity. This is the spiritual principle, that always God speaks in clarity. That he, remember, life is not a puzzle to be solved. Your vocation is not a riddle to be unraveled. That God always speaks in clarity. In the gospel today, even in this parable, the invitation is clear. The king says, I'm having a wedding feast. I want you here on this particular day. It is not obscure. It is not, again, a puzzle. It's not a riddle. It is clear. God always speaks in clarity. So keep this in mind for you and for me. If we find ourselves to be lost, realize, remember, God speaks in clarity. Now, here's the problem. So you are here. I'm here. Is this where I should be? God speaks in clarity. But what happens in the parable is God's clearly spoken, right? The king is clearly invited to his son's wedding feast. But some rebel, right? So some, so out and out say, absolutely not. And that, that could be us. Then we realize this, right? We, we might be faced with, here's God's invitation, who makes it very, very clear that, okay, I'm calling you to myself. I'm calling you to turn away from sin and turn towards me. And sometimes we absolutely rebel against that and say, absolutely not. I'm going to live the life I want to live. That's possible. That could be us. But I don't know if you heard or caught this. It says that the first group of people, it says, yeah, they, they rejected this. It said, but some ignored the invitation. I want to highlight that for a second. Some simply ignored the invitation. And you just wonder, can you imagine? Can you imagine being invited to a royal wedding and a royal, royal wedding feast and just acting as if you didn't realize it. Can you imagine ignoring this? I think we can because I think a lot of us might have some selective hearing <laughs> when it comes to God. We definitely have selective hearing when it comes to other people. I have a niece who, as she is, she is, I think she's in first grade this year, and she is the most gifted and talented selective hearing child I've ever met in my entire life. Her name is Lucy. And Lucy, I, I, I've watched her, I watched her parents say very, very clearly, clearly, Lucy, do this thing. And she has this ability to have this glazed over look, like as if she is so fascinated by something other than what her parents are saying. And they're shouting out her name, Lucy, do this thing. And she's just kind of oblivious. And I think this is amazing. This, this, this girl is going places, as long as those places are where she wants to go and no one's telling her what to do. But like, but she has this ability and we have the ability to have this selective hearing. So what it says in the, in the, Gospel today says, yes, some ignored this. One went to his farm, another went to his business. Basically, yeah, this invitation to the wedding, I mean, it's good, I, it's important. It's just not as important as what I've got going on. And this is true for us, right? Here's God's invitation. I made you for a purpose. I've called you to myself. And yeah, God, I get it, that's important. It's just not as important as what I've got going on, which is ridiculous. I mean, go back to the parable. You're invited to the royal wedding and the royal wedding feast. But I've got my farm. I've got my business. I've just got my stuff. See, this is the, this is the reality. When we ignore God's call, it's not like we missed God's call. In the, in the parable, they don't miss God's call. They just don't want it. And this can be us. I'm not missing God's call. I just don't want it. I ignore it. In fact, you know, the term to ignore, it's the same root, obviously, as the word ignorant. So, little Greek lesson, gnosis or gnosis means to know. So, ignore or ignorant means to not know. And so, if you're ignorant, it means you don't know. But to ignore doesn't, in our, how we use it, doesn't mean you don't know. It means you don't pay attention to. Right? It's, it's actually, it's a willful kind of a situation where I'm choosing not to know or I'm choosing to live as if I didn't know. That's the case. I'm choosing to act as if or to live as if I didn't know. Again, it's not that I missed it. I just don't want it. So the question I have to ask is, here's an invitation. Are there any invitations that I'm currently being offered that I'm currently ignoring? This is the question. Okay, you are here. This is your life. Who you are now is who you are. Where you are now is where you are. This is life. Is this where you should be? Well, let's ask the question. Are there any invitations you are currently being offered 
that you're currently ignoring? Is God extending any invitations right now to you that you're currently pretending that he's not extending? So we talked about this last weekend. Last weekend, some of those questions were, okay, am, am I in a state of grace? If I, if I want to get where God wants me to be, if he's calling me to, to not to be unlost, he's calling me to be found, okay, uh, am I in a state of grace? If I'm not, that invitation is to go to confession. That, that's the invitation. So am I currently being offered an invitation that I'm currently ignoring? Yeah, or the next one, the next question was, am I doing my daily tasks? If I'm not, the invitation is to act. The third question was, am I praying every day? If I'm not, the invitation is to pray. So question, are there any invitations I'm currently being offered that I'm currently ignoring? You are here. Is this where you should be? Or are you called to be somewhere else? Again, remember, God always speaks in clarity. So if, you, if you're like, I don't know, I, I'm panicking right now because I don't know if he's calling me somewhere else. If you clearly realize you're not ignoring any, any invitations, then clearly he's not inviting you there. So just, you are here and here's where you're supposed to be. So that's the first question. That's the first big thing of the, this is your life. Who you are right now is who you are. You are here. Is this where I should be? Are there any invitations I'm currently ignoring? Second question though, of course, and it's a, almost a deeper question. And the deeper question is, I'm here, but what if it's not enough? God has a call in my life, but what if it's not enough? Yes, God has a, has a purpose in my life, but what if that purpose isn't enough? Another way to say it is, what if what God wants for me isn't enough for me? What if what God wants for me isn't enough for me? What if I get there and I realize it isn't enough? That's why I go to St. Paul. It's the second reading today. You know, St. Paul, he has this whole thing and he says, he says, ah, I know how to, I know how to be hungry. I know how to be well-fed. I know how to live in abundance. I know how to live in scarcity. Paul basically is saying that I've lived through a lot. I, mean, I think it's just really remarkable. In fact, Paul even says, he says, I've learned the secret. Yeah, I have this, this secret. And the secret he, he's learned is, he basically says, I'm never lost. Like there's a lot of people out there who have that question like, what, what if what God wants for me isn't enough for me? And Paul's like, yeah, I, I've, I've learned the secret. I, I am never lost. But he, here's the, the issue. Paul had to learn the secret. He said, I've learned the secret of being hungry and being well-fed. I've learned the secret that in all circumstances, I'm content. But you realize that, that this might be us, that I say, actually, I'm still afraid. I'm still afraid. What if God's plan for me isn't enough for me? What if I get there and it's not enough? That's why I like to go back to uh, this St. Paul writing to the Philippians. This is the end of his life, one of his last letters. To back to one of St. Paul's first letters. And one of his first letters is 2 Corinthians. Uh, the first letter is 1 Corinthians, but the second letter is 2 Corinthians. In fact, some people say there's a letter between 1 and 2 Corinthians, so, but whatever. This is early on, early on in Paul's life, early on in his ministry. Here's Paul writing about his life and about how, okay, yes, I've said yes to the Lord. I've said yes to God. I don't know, what if I get there and he's, he's not there? What if I get there and it's not enough? He describes this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. To describe some of, the, some of the pains he went through as someone who's a follower of Jesus, he says, I've, I've had greater labors. I have far more imprisonments, far worse beatings, more numerous brushes with death. He says, five times at the hands of the Jews, I received 40 lashes minus one. He was beaten. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers from the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. Imagine, here's St. Paul. Frequently, he says, frequently I was hungry. Frequently I was cold. Frequently I couldn't sleep at night. Frequently I had no idea where I was going. And you can imagine that this is the same man who at the end of his life said, have no anxiety at all. Remember last weekend? This is the same man who says, yeah, have no anxiety at all. Don't worry. Because that's our, our fear, right? Our fear is, what if I get there and it's not enough? What if a God wants for me isn't enough for me? 
Well, St. Paul says, I lived through all this. I've lived through toil all night. I've lived through toil all day. I've, I've lived through, where's my next meal gonna come from? I lived through abundance. I've lived through all this pain. And every time, every time he came up to this pain, he had that question, is God gonna be there? And I got there and he was there. I had this stress of like, okay, but is there gonna, is, is, is there, is there gonna be enough? And he got there and God was there. So yeah, but, yeah, but that's, that's fine right now. But what if I, I, I in the future, when I, when I arrive and, and there's an incredible lack in my life and then St. Paul got there and God was there. It's living through this. It's living through realizing that you are here and God is here, that we realize someday, yeah, I'll get there. And you know what's gonna happen? God will be there. St. Paul says, I have learned the secret. I am never lost. I had the fear. Well, I have enough when I got there, when I get there. And I got there and then God was there. So he realizes God is here. And Paul is here. And that's enough. And this is the last thing, this is the key for all of us too. You do not ever have to be lost. Truly, on, on, on the map of your life, we're not waiting to get somewhere. We're not waiting to be someone. We're not waiting for God to arrive. We're not waiting for anything. You are here. This is your life. Who you are right now is who you are. We just have to simply ask the question. In order to realize you do not ever have to be lost, we ask the question, are there any invitations I'm currently being offered that I'm currently ignoring? And if there are, to not ignore them, <laughs> to pay attention to them, to answer them, and then to realize the truth, which is God is here and you are here. And that is enough.